Episode 4, Season 2, Brand New Board, Beagle Y, AI. <laughs> oh, congratulations. New release, new board, look at that. Robert's got it up. Mine's tied up in projects behind me. So today we have special guest Jared, who's helped bring it up from TI. Got a lot of work on yeah. it. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome, Jared. All right. Well, exciting new board, exciting new launch. Jason, how do you feel about it? Awesome. Yeah, no, this is, this has been cool. I think it's just, it's nice how easily you can kind of shove it into things. Like just, you know, take existing projects and beagleize them. Honestly, I think that's been the big difference for me too. I wasn't expecting that much of a usability difference, even over something like mm -hmm. Play. And, you know, not to say Play is not a great board. It's got its own, you know, set of merits, but it's just been interesting that just the form factor and the, the, the 40 pin header, right? Just lets you just shove it into so many things and yeah it turns out you know a lot of the stuff that is made for certain other boards is just kind of you know i squared c in the background and kind of hacked together anyway so it's you know you just you put it on beagle y and it, it just works out of the box or maybe tiny tiny changes and there you go yeah i can't really show my my my, my little robot arm mm -hmm. here right i was able just to to swap out one board and put in a beagle y ai in that and get a full AI robot arm. So we, yeah, we, we have, we have, we have one that we have in the, in the office as well. And we've, we've been affectionately referring to it as, as Jason's arm and people kind of give me <laughs> weird looks and I'll be like, no, 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 Jason's robotic arm. You know, he takes it off and gave it to us. But yeah, you guys, you guys did a lot of work, you know, with the, with seed as well on making sure that the, the board form factor is, is very, you know, plug and play with, with certain existing ecosystems. I don't know if you want to name drop or not, but yeah, the, the, Pin out works out in a way that, you know, expansion hats work great. So, you know, we've already tested a number of them. Third party POE, for example, works from WaveShare. We've, I've played with some motor drivers that just work out of the box pretty much. It's, it's nice. You can just go on Amazon and grab existing accessories, slap it on Beagle Y and it, it just runs with it. And as a, as an interesting side note, I found that at least HDMI displays I tend to be more stable on this board than certain others, especially when you have weird form factors. I have some extra widescreen ones uh, with touch screens that need a lot of changes on certain other SPCs and on Vigo I was just plug and play. You calibrate your touch screen to it and you're off and running. You know, I was surprised when looking at kind of the landscape of people building compatible hardware open or not, how little of them actually were mechanically compatible and how much more Beagle YAI was mechanically compatible than than other ones. I don't know if you've had that sort of same experience with the, the prototypes. You know, the only we, we do have that OLDI connector on the bottom. So a little bit of the bottom clearance stuff is is just you know slightly different. I think we might even try to adjust some of the large capacitors on the bottom, I think we still have some time to try to shift to those. We'll see how, so that goes, but that's been easily fixed with the Dremel. So I, I've just been really, really pleased with how nice of a job the seed guys and us working with them have done at, at making it mechanically a compatible, such that you can use enclosure or so where's, uh, where's the one I have? sipping my closure books. I don't know. Oh, look, we have, we have Meyer makes in chat. Well, nice, nice surprise there. Welcome. Hey. 14 presents. Nice. Hey, we'll, get an, we'll get an episode from you soon. Yeah. Get board out them. Yeah. So that's, that's, I don't know. I, I've been super, super pleased with how much of the different mechanical accessories just work. Right. Uh, there's just, I haven't found much that, that caused me any problems and that's not been the same with other third party hardware that I've seen. Right. Other, other keep not saying the word is too hard. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to say it. Come up gonna, with, well, whatever, whatever everyone, this is, this is an Andre statement, not a TI statement, not a Beagle statement. It's fine. You got to, you, you know, you, it's pie enabled. It's fine. It's, it's a pie. It's fine. It's not a pie. It's, it's Beagle Y. This, <laughs> you got to come up with a code word like California fruit or something like that, you know? <laughs> like a Beagle Y. Yeah. So, by the way, why? <laughs> is so we should give it so so why beagle why well it rhymes with sky and what <laughs> it rhymes with sky and well so why is actually like like beagle five right it's it, it's a, a, a classical roman numeral right? why is it a common one you've heard of it's like it's a little older than all the other roman numerals it's not that that common doesn't kind of stand in modern roman numerals but it's it is a a rational number as opposed to other irrational numbers, but it is 150. 
don't know if you knew that. No, I knew that. Much like the ratio of perform of AI performance. And one of the fun, fun things with Pinmux that we're trying to do is using the layout system and other types of overlays. The goal is same IO. So we're doing a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I got a message from Thomas Pedazzoni this morning. There's a new discussion on the device tree list to try to build device tree connectors, right? So that's very relevant here. So I was thinking about that too, because the connector is a nice subsystem to move IO from different regions and read and map them. So this would be a fun one to play with that on. So. Yeah, we with, Boolean, with the Boolean guys, we've already done a lot of the legwork, right? And in, even initially... You know, because we we did it to try to make the 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 the, the Beagleone K headers compatible no matter what the SOC is, right? So moving to new generations of SOCs that you can still have a single device tree overlay that would be supported across all the different SOCs that might have compatible K headers. So the same thing, like it was already thought through to and 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 pushed upstream into U boot, right? The things that are necessary for doing it with hats. So we've been working on the infrastructure for this, you know, in the open source development community for a while. And, you know, this really gives a good point, you know, to try to, to, there's a lot of opportunity really just to make everything just work right. You know, across whoever provides the, the baseboard. I I, I suspect it's going to end up just benefiting the community, right? In general, it's Mm -hmm. not just, it's not just Beagle here that's going to benefit from it. Because I think had adoption, you know, like you said, you know, mechanically it's there, but a lot of the, what's been tried so far, the EPROMs and reading IDs and auto configuring just kind of hasn't materialized just because nobody's really been interested to do it. And that's kind of a classic challenge, right? With any, any kind of, you know, modular ecosystem, but this should be a good push for it. No, I think, I, I think, you know, rising tides raise all ships, right? I think this is actually very beneficial to to everybody right i mean i think you know this is imitation is the sincerest form of flattery right i I think that you know we we you know i i appreciate very much what those guys have have, i've done and i think that but providing an open hardware platform and that ecosystem i think just helps helps everybody out and one of the nice things it's still very early for this i mean the the j722s that's on here was just rfc'd for uboot this morning so we have a lot of time to tune things before. Yep. So G7, whatever G7, Thomas wants to do. The device, the official name for the, the industrial version that's on there is uh, AM67A. Yep. But yeah. And we were just talking about this right before we, we went live. But, you know, on the on the on docs.beagleboard.org, there will be a full list of what hats have been tested. And, you know, if there's any changes needed, anything like that, we're going to try to keep that up. One of the questions that I, you know, we've seen on the Discord, and you know, if you're not aware of the Discord, make sure you join the the BeagleBoard Discord. There's going to be a link in the description. We have a lot of discussions about the boards there. Jason's on there, Robert's on there, Jared and I are also there. So if you ever have questions, that's the best place to to do them. Aside from the forum, the forum is still very much active as well. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get a lot of questions on how to use all the R5s. Exactly. On this, on this yeah. chip, the M4 for booting has been switched to an R5. So now we have multiple R5s to play with. Yeah. And people ask, you know, why is this PRU going away? I keep seeing that. And PRU is not going away. Like the official TI stance is that PRU is very much still in active development. We're working on it. It's just, we find that on a lot of the, or, you know, what the market kind of demands, right? Is a lot of people are interested in something that can do real-time control, but they don't necessarily want to use a, a, a different ISA. They're used to ARM. They're used to bar fives or M4s. So that's kind of a, a, a more general path for real-time control in all of chips. So if you're going to take up die area, a lot of people prefer R5s. PRUs is still going to be there, but they're going to be used more for stuff like CSSG, where you actually want to also be able to use it for industrial Ethernet, things like that. And there it really gets to stretch its legs. There's still going to be general purpose chips, of course, that have PRU, but that's the official line for, for everyone that's asking, you know, what's happening to PRUs. Not going yeah. away. That's why it's not on this device. So we've got it in the 6.2 family, right? So the Pocket Beagle is going to have a ton of PRU pins on it, right? I think that was probably one of the biggest knocks on the Beagle Play is not enough PRU pins on it. And yeah, the, the, the plan is right to do both the Pocket Beagle and BeagleBone form factors with the AM6.2. So certainly not moving away from that, right? So you'll see you know, Pocket Beagle and BeagleBone form factors continuing to carry a PRUs. Right. But in this Beagle Y form factor, right, the the R5s or the R5s are the king here for the high speed IO. 
right? And I, I'm, I'm excited this says DSP and getting more about how to program the DSP on here. One of the questions, I don't know if you've read all like the Y Combinator stuff or any of the, the like stuff that shows up in like places like Reddit, but oh yeah, when, when, when people hear tops, they really have no idea of like, okay, four tops, how much is four tops? What, what could you yeah. do? Yeah, what does it actually that? mean? That's always the question. <laughs> I mean, what I, what I like to kind of, yeah, it's, and it's a valid question, right? Like I, it's, it's one of those where it's like, it's kind of like gigahertz on CPUs. Like it, it really, you know, that, that moniker from like, you know, the early 2000s really doesn't work anymore. Like you can't compare five gigahertz on Intel versus five gigahertz on, you know, Zen three versus Zen four or whatever. Right. But the closest I would say is imagine, you know, a coral TPU, it's that kind of level performance, similar right for video inferencing at least how um, much did you say like it's f four tops and i think a coral is also four tops yeah it so it, it works out about the same right so if you're gonna have an external coral pca accelerator it'll be you'll be there it'd actually be interesting because we could you know if you some bandwidth that way though right i mean you, going you, going you, yeah, yeah, coral i don't think you'll you'll get some performance definitely out of going with the beagle y versus trying to do yeah and i think it, it's going to be interesting right once we have we have a we can try to mount a coral on on beagle Y and we can actually do you know head to head sure. comparisons if we ever wanted to yeah i mean because they they did they the um, so there was the original standalone coral but they did a coral dev kit that actually combined it with an nxp processor they did um, yeah and that was over p I, I don't know if that was over pcie over usb3 because they support both i i thought it was pcie with the tpu but yeah, I think that was a fair bit. That would be a, a reasonable like comparison point, right? But this is a, a lot cheaper and a lot, I think, more readily available. So I'm guessing this is this is the price of the TPU itself, basically, is what you're what you're looking at. And, and that leaves like your GPU you look, free, right, at that point, because there's also still the 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 beefed up GPU on on Beagle Y. Yep, yeah, the fifty the gigaflops, gigaflops, right? Yeah, and I think that's one thing we actually haven't really mentioned in uh, in any of the promotional materials yet. What what imagination GPU it is, because people were asking, you know what exactly the gpu was i don't think i don't even think we said it was a 50 gigaflop gpu right because it's it's much stronger than what's on play on am62 yeah but what does that do to the um i mean ultimately we've got to have good open source driver support if we're gonna have long-term yeah long-term hmi support right on this yeah like the, the 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 ai64 right has eight tops right that's you know a little more than twice the price of this like a, a jetson Orin nano is like 40 tops that's like 500 bucks yeah yeah and when you're comparing with the ai64 the other nice thing that this board brings it has the wave the wave 5 encoder and also the imaginations jpeg encoder so there's a lot more hardware blocks to actually do the video algorithms before you get to the tops on the What's ai five it's wave 5 was pushed to mainline i think two releases ago but it's a cnc wave 5 yeah it's basically a video encoder decoder Oh, is that the vpu yeah ip okay yep. so a lot of things like when you're comparing this to the ai64 this thing this chip has some more ip blocks to speed it up because we have we have the v, we have vpu support on the the ai64 you're saying it's this chip actually has a discrete wave 5 on it so from chips and, in and that and tda4 vm does not nope i'm pretty sure I'm four, we have to use the, <laughs> i'm pretty sure on the ai64 we have to use the m4 with a special firmware to do it we're on uh, am67 it's a discrete block yeah. that that sounds right. Yep. Okay. So we can get there from AI64, but we don't have the we don't have the the upstream support with the without having to load some firmware. Yep. You lose the M4. Okay. Well, I think losing an M4 on the AI64 is probably not that big a deal. It's an easy trade off. Yeah. Well, the nice thing <laughs> is it's fully mainline, so there is firmware on mainline, and so yeah, it just it works. Whereas the M4, you have to load the right firmware, and yeah. Yeah, having the video codec support and V4 V4L, so all the V4L stuff is going going well for encoder decoder. You you already uh, run those? I have not, but I've totally work. That's that's the wonderful thing about the community, right? Is people just kind right. of run and do stuff, and each of the you know everyone has their own interests. Uh, I want to just jump to Jared really quick here because Jared's been doing a lot of the bring up work, you know, from from the TI side, and he's been a gold star, just you know helping us with with everything i've been bothering him at work way too much you know he's already busy doing other things and i'm like hey i'm gonna, gonna do this for the wire real quick like i had him i had him help with i squared c a couple of days ago especially if the last couple of months of unreleased hardware jared's been like oh, what's this magic bit do jared's been finding it so yeah a lot of a lot of internal doc searching which is just irritates just push push it public push it public already but... well now the am67a doc is public so 
yeah everything everything's public i i am no longer the one with all the magic bits and gatekeeping at all you know, but, you're still the only one yeah. that knows what all of it means so yeah yeah the, that a 2000 tr page trm got it all got it all locked away Hey, it's, uh, it's, it's better that it's there than not, right? If you want to look through it, it's, you know, it's, it's publicly available. So it's, it's nice. It's nice to have some, the blessing uh, and the curse. The docs. Yeah. yeah. Until you reach the, the IP blocks that are still NDA'd, but it, and you see the TRM, you have pages on pages for some parts and then like a paragraph or something like that. Something's, something's up, but yeah, it's been a lot of device tree work. Which has been, you know, painful and not painful at the same time. Depends on who you ask. But yeah, so excited to still do just miscellaneous hats and things like that whenever, whenever I got the free time. Andre will probably ask me for some other stuff at some point. Say, yeah. hey, can you can you bring up another another overlay? Yeah, and I got work. I, to I I'm throwing too many DSI displays at Fort Jared, but it, you know DSI is one of those things that I even even the Pi hasn't. You know, I, I don't think anyone's really figured out DSI properly. That's that's just my theory. Just because every 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 display manufacturer seems to want to do, want to do their own thing, and DSI is just a yeah. weird weird goose when it comes to you know the low speed to high speed communication and how Linux probes it. There's also, I guess, display manufacturers, not the display manufacturers, but the Linux kernel guys don't want to just have generic DSI as the display type, right? So that all kind of complicates yeah. things a little bit. With, with the yeah. RPI DSI panels, there's the there's a bridge on it that does all the DSI handshaking for you. It's like if you don't if you don't have one of those, that's not standard as well. So like you could get a WaveShare one that uses a different bridge, and then you have to do something else different, which is just massive pain. But <laughs> Yeah. So you end up with like, found, yeah. Or as we found out, it changes from year to year on even the same model. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. When you have other time, he's worked on one, one, but not the next. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have no idea what, what's going on there. But it yeah. reminds me, I got a DigiKey box with a bunch of cables. I get to go test some DSI here. So you got, you got the you official got ones, right? Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, these work great. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to use pre-made cables that just work. Yeah, you buy them off the shelf. Thank you for some other manufacturer Andre, for building Andre, them. Yeah. Andre keeps buying random DSI panels and like this one, Jared. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was, I was given the TI credit card and told you are allowed to buy things to test things. So I, you know, I've been, I've been using it very well. Just swiping the Amex. Just yeah. fucking, a lot of nice panels out there. Actively, actively testing things. Yeah, that's the problem with DSI is you know, and and displays in general, right? We get asked a lot. You know, as, as Beagle as anyone else, right? It's, it's why are displays so expensive when you can get, you know, sub hundred dollar HDMI ones. And the 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 truth of the matter is that it's a volume thing, right? It's nobody wants to spin off a one one off display for DSI or LVDS or any any interface that is an HDMI. And even when they do, they're a little expensive, like two three hundred dollars. And even then, they're usually basically an offshoot of a tablet. And that tab, as long as that, that tablet exists, great. But the second the Lenovo tablet or whatever stops being manufactured in a year, then that display also goes EOL. And so that's 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 kind of what it is. We found that you know working with display manufacturers is, is a challenge to, to, to put it put it simply. I gotta go get a charger real fast. I will be back though. No worries. You gotta talk about OS compatibility, I guess, because that's another big one, right? It's, we're we're not just saying strictly Debian. Yeah, I mean, I've been spending most of my time actually working with like customized images for other machines, and then just making them bootable for Eagle AI, right? So, starting out with not Robert's images for once, it's a, it's a strange new world. Yeah, because we're booting up the micro SD card on these boards. As long as there's a fat partition, we can pretty much boot anything. So, yep, I just got to basically copy the bootloader files over, set your X to Linux file, and just make sure you 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 brought in your own kernel of the device tree and the Z image, or I'd say uncompressed I image, and it'll basically boot. Yeah, I I wish. Otherwise, it's something... otherwise it's a standard yeah. ARM sixty four. So in EXT Linux to detect which computer you were on like to do something with the some type of like the board model number or something you know any anything help nope. excellence is just dumb it's it's just whatever you write it is what it does so it has to be before it yeah so i i changed the default in order to swap my sd card like i want to take my sd card and boot it on another board i just i changed what the default is in the x linux to point to the one i want and then it, 
and then it boots and runs. Yeah, as long as you have a cereal, you can actually just use use Robert's little boot menu as well. So, you know, I'm allergic to cereal cables. I know, I know, but you know, but we do have the cereal cable connector right on. Yeah, it. yeah, and yeah. the little. I, I guess I can definitely use it in this place, but the Pi Debugger works great for that. Yeah, the Pi Debug header is great. Buy a Pi Debugger. They're, they work good. Mm. I wish they were USB-C. That's my one my one complaint, please. Yeah, who's using micro? Yeah, Evan, USB? Evan, if you're like, please type C already. <laughs> type C. Yeah, like I have a I have a Pi Zero Two W I got somewhere. It's also like bothering me that I have to get type C micro USB cables for it. They have a power detection thing that in that in that little debugger too that I don't know exactly how they did it. I mean, not necessarily that hard, but I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by it because it 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 can. I think it's it's I think it's safe to not drive. Like we have a the protection circuit. I don't know if the other boards actually have the protection circuit in them. So like, if you use our debug header with the powered up you know serial you're not going to blow up the board right it looks like they have they have buffers on uh, is there a buffer on, both, in yeah. The, yeah. on the on the other board yeah but the debug header actually seems to be smart enough to the the to not drive anyway i'm not sure if that's true or not but it seems like it is i think so yeah it's yeah it looks like it's just the rp rp2040 Doing the most of the legwork, a five volt regulator, the QSPY for for its memory, and then they just have they just have those those buffers there. The they they published the schematic for the debug probe. That's very nice of them. Oh, very simple. PDF. Schematic, yeah. PDF. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the other thing. Full schematics. Yeah. Not PDF. Yeah. Not, not just, just the PDF. debug probe. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole. Well, actually, there there are some limited PDFs on the the yeah. their boards, but PDF is a far cry from like actual source schematic and layout right yeah. so and i don't i don't know maybe they'll decide to to release that and i'd actually be happy yeah. if they do it i'm i'm not speaking for jason them. here i'm speaking as as me here but you know open challenge to every soc maker out there and every board maker release your release your schematics for the boards stop hiding it people want to yeah. make stuff with it i want to make stuff with it well it's just it's just <laughs> not the barrier right i mean yeah. that's not I and mean, if people can't yeah. buy the the chip, right? What does it matter if you give them the design? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I argue the same thing same for displays, right? It's, I just, just give me the pinout. Give me the, give me the timings. What's, you know, what's, why is secretive about it? Yeah. I mean, there's other barriers for like making sure you, you know, people come to you to buy boards or whatnot. Then spinning a board, I mean, it's expensive, but it's not so expensive. There's actually money to be made out of it because you can't do it. Right. And yeah. And you know the the people that really want to do it, they'll they'll do it anyway, right? It's it's more the hobby that we want to enable, right? Kind of small time, but yeah. Uh, which reminds us, we have the task of because this is yet again done in Allegro of exporting and and making available for people that want to get it into Kakad. That's the yes. that's the big one for me um, is getting it yeah. into Kakad. Yeah, you can you can put that on my list of things. I have the licenses, so I can do it. Um, I did it. The nice thing is Kakad has some had examples already then, so. Yeah, I guess the only big difference is we follow the the new POE spec. So yeah, yep, POE had it works. Yep, so yeah, the POE is down there yeah. versus on the top. One 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 cable power, and you're on the network with it. So if you want to play around making some IP cameras or things like that, you know, you have the dual CSI ports. You know, plenty of power to to drive them. And we actually have just as a as a as a quick side note, there's so we've. We've worked with ArduCam to for the FPD link multi-camera solutions, right? So we have the the quad boards. So you can use a single CSI port, four dual, dual CSI ports, and you can get four cameras out over you know multiple meters of coax. There's also a Raspberry Pi compatible hat that is two cameras. So that way you could do three cameras on this board in theory, and we're we're testing that out internally as well. But it's you know sub hundred dollars to get two extra cameras. You know, it's a fun fun solution for people that aren't aware of it. What? So I guess you're saying that uh, like to try to do eight though, right? Because you've got the 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 two. You can do eight. Here. Yes, you can also do eight. Is there enough bandwidth? There, there's enough DDR bandwidth. bandwidth. You're gonna be yeah. You end up being a little limited, not necessarily by DDR bandwidth, but the CSI bandwidth itself. So I think you end up being at like uh, you can do 1080p 30 FPS. I think is is kind of where you're at for video streaming, but that's concurrent on eight streams. We haven't tested that on six seven as far as I know. It's been tested on six eight and six nine. Um, uh, but I think it you know. I think four to six is definitely doable. Eight might be, you know, starting to push it on DDR bandwidth, especially. But yeah, there was some talk on the X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, X from about the, the ISP bandwidth, right? So I've seen somewhere six hundred megapixels. What 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 is our 
real ISP bandwidth here. Jared, I think you're going to have to comment on that because I don't remember for 6.7 off the top of my head. Here. So one, the kind of hack we do for Beagle Play normally, right, is we use, you know, that doesn't have an ISP at all. So we can use uh, cameras that have an ISP themselves and then you don't run into that bandwidth at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there, there's an ISP. Yeah, 600 megapic megapixels per second. Yeah. Yeah. And there's an ISP tuning guide for this too, right? So we're not there, stuck with. There is. And you're, yeah, then you're not stuck with just IMX219 or, you know, whatever's out of the gate, but. You know, will we push I, the live camera? We always wonder. Yes, but yes. The live camera is happening. Is that a promise? Is it what? Andre, <laughs> I mean, it's it's. You know, I, I'm I, I haven't been part of those talks, but you know, considering how on six two live camera was, you know, very quickly built. taken by their devs and built. I, you know, I have. I think there's very good chance on this guy. That will be if if not if not at, <laughs> you know at mass market availability soon soon after. I think that's, that's a safe bet. Yeah, because we, we nice definitely use... want it. Like that, that, there's no question that we want it, right? It's yeah. Because if you watch the lib camera mailing list right now, there's a lot of software IPAs and software ISP solutions coming down the pipe. So, yeah, yeah, there's a good chance that we could use that for these products in the six two. Yeah, just to kind of adjust people's expectations. So with with ISP tuning in general, right? Like there is a tuning guide, and you know every vendor provides their own tuning guide, but it's it's really not as easy as you know you bring your own camera. And Jared can speak to that, but it's not you you bring your own camera and you know you you run the, the little tuning algorithm and you know how it goes your your driver, right? There's it's it's a very involved process, and that's there's a reason why there's multiple companies that make their entire you know it's it's their raison d'être for how they how they make money, right? It's it, it still is a bit of an art, but we we are actively trying to you know on the TI side of these trying to enable more more cameras for for the processors out of the gate. But because there is so much ability to differentiate in the ISP code itself, not just the tuning, right? Because that that's just so much more reason why to open it up. And you know, I mean, lip camera is a, a would be huge a huge start to that, but there's. Yeah, the, these ISPs are actually, you know, very programmable, right? And they kind of have to be because there's a lot of, you know, it's not just the demosaicing and the, the all the, well, it's been too many years since I've done this, but right, there's there's a lot of opportunity to, to differentiate in a lot of different algorithms, not just your 3A, 4A sort of stuff, right? There's a lot more stuff going on to compensate for the fact that, the manufacturing process for these CMOS sensors, you know, right, is just not right. There's just a lot of cost to be saved, and then a lot of it that can be fixed in software. And that's why you have these cell phones, right, that can take these amazing quality pictures with really junk sensors, right? And so I think it's I think it'd be huge the more TI can open up uh, programming of the ISP. So hopefully yeah. we'll see a lot more of that. I see Jared. Jared looks like his connection is dropping in and out, but there is right now there is an ISP tuning guide that TI provides. Brad eighty six is the official document name. It's called the AM six XA ISP tuning guide. Eighty six, you said? Yes. If you look up AM six XA ISP tuning guide, there's a document there. Okay. This pure A D eight six, is that it? Yes, I think so. And you know, it's it's not the most comprehensive thing, you know, frankly, but it's you know, it's it's definitely a start. And there is a tuning tool we provide, and yeah. it's actively. This is really, on. it's really not giving a, a full programming guide. This doesn't look like right. It's it's, it's really just a per, per, parametric. Cor correct. There are other documents also that you can kind of reference. There's there's TDA four V mid VPAC ISP tuning overview, and there's you know there's it's kind of scattered right now. I can I can tell you internally there is there's active development on it. We're trying to make it more readable. A lot of it is just. Same thing, I guess, as 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 the DSP sometimes, where you're trying to condense down a lot of information to make it readable to somebody who's not familiar with the the actual <laughs> IP design, right? But yeah. Well, yeah, it looks pretty active though, so it's yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, Arducan's also trying to provide on their own side their their version of the their their guides, right? So they've actually been doing a really good job of that too. They have a full V3 Link camera solution kit, uh, quick start guide set up. 
that doesn't go into tuning, but they're they're you know they're providing their services as far as enabling new cameras. Sure. I I'm I'm excited because I want to see a global shutter. That's my big thing that I really want to see. I I think it's interesting because a lot of those are trickling down from automotive. So for those not familiar with global shutter, normally you're you're scanning you're the sensor top to bottom, right? So if you're moving really fast, you're gonna have these artifacts. You can actually probably see my hand kind of you know juggle back and forth but with a global shutter camera you're actually getting a full picture of the sensor every time so you lose some dynamic range there's there's some downsides to them and they're more expensive normally but what you gain is uh, motion clarity right so if you're trying to do image recognition of something that's fast moving for example if you're trying to like count small things a global shutter camera is you know kind of unbeatable there because all of a sudden you have a full image that you can you can send over to your uh, accelerator um and yeah i don't know that's that's like i, I get i get nerdy about cameras sorry but some of these high-speed cameras, right? I think looking at the super high-speed camera applications could be could be a, a lot of, of interest, right? So I don't know how suitable this is for some of that. You know, my, my son's into baseball. I'd love to be able to measure his spin rate, for example. Yeah, I'm actually curious. Some of the some of the cheaper global shutter cameras, like I think IMX two nine six is one of them. What is it? Yeah, IMX two nine six. I wonder what the frame rate on that is, right? I think if you lower down the resolution, they'll go up to, you know, a couple hundred FPS, if, I'm, if I remember right, on some of the sensors. But yeah, that would be interesting, right? It's just, you can do, because especially once you go to lower resolution, right, you can you can inference a lot faster at that point, too, if you're trying to do anything like that. Well, I think I have a, a challenge here, then I will... We're issuing a lot of challenges this episode. I think we're more, more so than usual. <laughs> well, that's the thing with new hardware. It's like, we, oh, let's see what we can do. Yeah, let's push it. Is it really similar to AI AI sixty four right in terms of the ISP capability right? Because then we've got this essentially compatible. You know, they're not the same right. They're the edge connectors instead of the vertical connectors right. But we've still got the same twenty two pin yep. connections right. So and that's the same like electrically. You'll be fine. It's just yeah, any small well, software. The software difference. I'm concerned about. But... I yeah, I don't think I don't think the ISP should be that different from AI sixty four. All right. I'm... That's don't, it. I'm, don't I'm, me on that. But my theory is that it's not. I'm going to see if I can capture station. baseball spin rate. This is this is gonna. Be, we need to start doing shorts, and that this just one short is just Jason going. I'm going to capture baseball spin rate. Mm-hmm. I was thinking millimeter wave might be kind of one way to do it, right? Just try to see the the echoes, but I don't know that it would be. Oh, like because there's going to be some sort of Doppler effect based on the spin rate, but I don't know if that's going to would be this... better. Is this a 60 gigahertz radar that I have connected to Beagle YI behind me? Could it be? No. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be better off than... I'm very interested to see what you're going to do there, but I don't know if it's better to do visual camera. Because the hard part, I think, is focusing on the seams, right? How do I get the... Yeah. Well, and it, it depends on the range too, right? So I think your your point cloud ends up being not necessarily that detailed at a distance. So you might capture yeah. the ball. Yes. I'm, I'm not enough... Really, radar that's why I was really trying to think of that. Because, well... I, I would not expect the point cloud to be very detailed, but I was hoping, like, thinking about it in terms of the millimeter wave, right, is just the difference between, like, one edge of the ball and another edge of the ball, is if I could, if I managed to get a, a, a couple samples, even, even not, I mean, I'm not going to hit the edges, but if I can get two samples on the ball and yeah. get a differential, my hope is if I get two samples on the ball that the, 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 the change in the Doppler reflection, right, because you're, I, I believe you're, Point cloud data includes both the. I mean, there's, there's, there. I, I believe that you get some of the, the, not just the, the, the first derivative, the dirt with the velocity, right? But I think you get some additional. I thought there might be essentially a, a third, a, a second derivative to the in the data that you got, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I just started playing with it. I do know, yeah. I do know somebody who would be very interested to talk to you about it, though. So remind me after the call, and I'll, I'll put you in contact with somebody from the radar team because they're. They're playing around with things like that too. There's a lot of just fun, fun things you can do with these guys. It's surprising, but it'd be fun to try to integrate it with Y. And I guess speaking of why I'm playing with this, we're all gonna be at Embedded World next week. Big show, Nuremberg, Germany. Sweet. Hopefully we'll see we'll see some of the some of the viewers as well. That's like come by, see it. There'll be AI's presence. So Yep. Oh, I see Alex in chat. He was he was responding. Sorry, Alex, if we didn't I didn't see your chats, but yeah, six hundred megapixels per second and eight cameras might push DGR bandwidth. So do you do you want to talk, Jason, about what we're doing at a better world next year? Uh next year, next week. Next week. <laughs> next week, yeah. We're I'm getting ready. Um, I'm getting ready to fly out tomorrow. So we have a, a a a obviously the robot arm, right? So you'll be able to see the robot arm doing some object recognition and some some 
you know, some pick and place stuff all driven by BeagleY AI. There will be a triple display going with BeagleY AI. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. Jared, do you want to you want to talk about it a little bit? Because that was your that was your baby, and you know it's the first time you do it on a device, so that was that was just a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three three display HMI demo built built by KDAP. Thank you, thank you. K four created by KDAP, built with cute and specific jargon that needs to be said. But yeah, so factory automation HMI demo three display. It's LDI DSI and HDMI all running at the same time so yeah and i think for a 1080p hdmi and then 1200 p oldi so that's lvds for those that don't know and then what's the dsi um that's the thing that the pipe is uh, right so 800 by 480 but i think I mean, it was yeah. yeah 800 by 480 yeah yeah so but that in theory could yeah. go up and then that's just yeah it's yeah. capable yeah. of uh, two or four K or something like that. I think that uh, sounds sissy. Yeah. Make you guess which one of those but... is. I don't remember which one. I think it's Sigit's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. What I recall is the LDI and the DSI were both four K capable. Yeah, not quite four K. Thirty eight for uh, for all the is thirty eight forty by ten eighty. And then the DS uh, the DSI is also thirty eight forty by ten eighty. So it's an ultra wide ten eighty P if you want to look at it that way. Like super ultra wide. So, so that also 4K, 4K would be, yeah, it's on 2K. So 4K would be 3840 by 2160, and this is 3840 by uh, by 1080. So Okay. Yeah. And that's a pixel clock limitation, so it's 300 megahertz pixel clock for um, DSi. Yeah, and I think in the HDMI, we're limited by the, the yeah. pixel clock on the PCB, right? So I don't I don't know if it's the, the yeah. IT framer. Or the the IT framer is going to be yeah, limited to 1080p. Six. But because we're coming across parallel, right, that's just parallel RGB. 24 bits per pixel yeah all right so at, at 1080p yeah ap60 right that's 60 at, at ap60 yeah and that's that's actually the limitation of, of the ip block 2 for dpi for 24 bit but that's that's also because once you go past that right you're already at what is it like 300 megahertz pixel clock so you the over dpi especially right it's not a serial interface so you're starting to add a lot of noise to your pcb so you really don't want to go much higher than 1080p for dpi you want to go to a different interface like embedded display for or oldi or something differential right yeah sorry got an around displays too and so we'll see those demos there's at least one more very exciting demo andre that you got to to work on last week that we oh yeah that, that's that can be blurred it's blurred behind me i don't it's a bit blurred. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to stay blurred. blurred. It's going to stay blurred. It's going to stay blurred. blurred. Yeah. But, but, um, There's tubes. So we can see tubes. There's a, an HEB. Very excited about that demo. There's, there's a bottle of um, vodka behind me that I don't know if you can see. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Too much detail already. <laughs> How does it all add up? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm very excited about that one. That is if worth taking a trip to the TI booth on its own to, to go see that. Absolutely. That one's going to be very visually fun. Yeah, it's been a been working on it for like a week and a half now. It's been it's a lot of fun, but again, that it, it's been part of the surprise of why you know I've 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 found that you know working with existing existing hats and things like that has been just pretty much a no brainer. Like that's that that was the part that did not give me any trouble. I was expecting that to be kind of annoying, honestly, and it wasn't. So yeah, 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 and I say kind of annoying, right? Because you got the ice cream, the lines. Yeah, when I say kind of annoying, right? It's uh, you got to realize, right? A lot of the you know, yeah, you're dealing with a brand new SOC that's just been brought up. You're dealing with a brand new board that's that's you know just gone through testing. A lot of the stuff is just you know it's 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 so new that nobody's really tried to do it before. So it's you know and in theory it should work, but it's you know has anyone tried it yet? No. So I'm not, until someone's tried it, there's always the question of you know is there some weird bug somewhere? And with this board, I I think it's been pretty painless. Then you know that's that's nice. I also shout out shout out to Seed for the power delivery because I've had I've gotten my Pi Five. I've been trying to play with, you know, trying to get the same thing just running on, on both just for, for some comparisons. And the, the Pi 5, I've gotten to power crash several times. And this this guy's been been rock solid as far as, you know, not browning out on a 5 volt 3M supply. So, and I've been I've been loading the USB ports and the, 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 the header. So, good stuff. All right. Why don't we end this so I can get my shopping list for starting my high speed camera project? No worries. Yeah, exactly. Jason, Jason's got work to do. And also, we'll be at, at EOSS the week after the week after Embedded Worlds. We have three weeks of conferences actually where we're gonna have Beagle Y around. Then or have Beagle. The open yeah, source open hardware, hardware in Beagle. Montreal. Open hardware summit. Yep. Yep. So open hardware summit, embedded open source summit in Seattle, and Embedded Worlds. We'll be all over the world. We'll be ready for for people. You know, as long as it's all over the world is is the U.S., Canada, and, and Germany. We'll, we'll be in Asia and other things. All right. 
well, thanks everyone for watching. This has been the Beagle Y AI episode. We're really excited, right, about what's coming up. Lots of documentation to work on in the meantime. Lots of lots of little little projects. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, that's when we lost Deepak. He had to go uh, write some documentation. Yeah, he's been he's been coming up with some great great art in the in the background as well. Yeah. So it, working hard on, on making things pretty. So that's that's exciting. I think I think this is gonna be a he's, good launch. He's he's been doing a lot of work, so very very much appreciate everybody in the team has. So thank you very, very much for helping us get here. All right, thanks everyone. See you.